that we have around. It will take you years and years to finish something. And when it comes to leadership, uh, where is leadership for tomorrow? Naturally, the thing is, uh, the concept of leadership presupposes some type of followership, which may or may not be true. You can think of a situation where there is a leader, but there are no followers. Okay? So, that, that's a very different type of debate that generally people who deal with the problem of leadership have. Amongst the newer approaches to leadership, we have something called a five-level approach, which comes in very handy when you look at social issues and leadership uh, in the organizational context. First is that uh, leaders are essentially people who are very capable. So your abilities, the skills which we talked about earlier. The second level is where the leader contributes as a team member, himself or herself. The leader is not somebody high and mighty, but also a person who is sharing or contributing to what activities the group is involved in. Then a leader at the third level has to be a competent manager. He has to manage things. When I use words, use he, she is implied, so please don't mind it. I'm not having a sexual bias. At the fourth level, the leader has to show effectiveness, not just competence. So there are larger issues of team building, putting people together, putting resources together, going beyond the target, going beyond the goals, and then making things achieve. And the fifth level is where the leader <coughs> acts as a pure executive. Now, there's some type of a progression from very basic to the highest level of leadership. We have examples like that. Uh, if I was to take an example from my own institution, which is IMMWAS, we generally believe Ravi Mathai was uh, an example of this type of leadership. And if you go to the corporate sector, somebody like Narayan Murthy uh, is another example of this type of leadership. But the important thing about this level of leadership is that it has a professional will, a willingness to do something, a conviction to do something, plus the individual has personal humility. So when both these things combine, you know, the example we keep hearing about, we are very powerful leaders, but they are very powerful leaders. They believe that we are superior and others are inferior. That's why I said, can you have a situation of leadership where you are not really focusing so much on followership, but you are thinking of how best to get results in the activities in which you are involved. These are the type of people who, if I was to give a quote, who look out of the window and they don't look at the mirror. The leaders generally are very fond of looking at themselves in the mirror. They try to show to themselves and want to make sure to themselves that they are very impressive. Okay. So they are always talking big about themselves. But a person who is operating at the fifth level of leadership is not thinking of what he or she is contributing. Thinking about how things have been accomplished, what others have contributed, of the operations in, in which that person is involved. Now, when you look at the issue of leadership, and Dr. Chen is going to give you a lot of inputs, scientific inputs about it, there are, there are always new things coming up in our disciplines, and there's a new world which leadership theorists have been talking about, which is called neo it's a new word. 